I'm Nora, Ambassador of Human Security for All, and I believe that I am the youngest person on this webinar today. So today I was presented with two choices. I could talk about sustainable peace in quite a professional manner, talking about how we need to focus on conflict resolution, social justice, human rights, economic development, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, if we want sustainable peace. But I would like to use this opportunity today in a slightly different way. And the fact that now I have a full attention of you, mostly decision makers, to present you a practical solution to a sustainable peace. And that solution is us, young people. So growing up, we, the youth, are often filled with grand ideas and enthusiasm for making a positive change in the world. However, we are frequently being met with a familiar refrain. You are too young, they say. You do not know what you're talking about. In schools and universities, we always engage in discussions about global issues and we are very aware of them, from politics to global food crisis. We always study the problem and yet we are rarely encouraged to seek practical solution. We are really rarely pushed to act. And we always hear this message, you, you would have the power to change the world or you, the people in general, each individual has the power to change the world. So I pose this question to all of you here today. How many of you personally, genuinely feel that you possess the power to change the world? And how many of you already know precisely how to go about it? So why do I ask this question? Because each one of you mostly occupies a respected position a position that empowers you to shape and influence the world, whether you're a CEO, a minister, ambassador, or maybe hold another title. However, when we talk of changing the world, we encounter the obstacle, and that obstacle is the word power. So why does power pose a challenge when we talk about changing the world? Well, the answer is simple. The youth lack this kind of power. You might be confused, what am I talking about? But consider the presence of young voices in the main decision-making bodies, parliaments, institutions, and the like. I have very shocking statistics, which is globally, only 1.6 of representatives in the parliaments are under the age of 30. And mere 11% are under the age of 40. So we often hear impassionate speeches proclaiming, youth is our future, we need the youth. However, the issue lies in the lack of execution. Institutions pro proudly highlight their youth units and bring us young people into the fold as participants, advocates of important causes. Yet they seem to believe that our mere presence at events is enough. As if to say, look, we also encourage your youth participation checked. But the truth is that true change requires more than token gestures. It requires empowering youth to be equal partners in decision-making processes. So the irony here is that today's youth is going to be tomorrow's leaders, and this planet is going to be left to them. But at the same time, they have no power in the decision-making processes right now. I know from my personal experience how hard it is to be a young, enthusiastic person that wants to affect this world in a positive way, but does not feel heard, does not feel empowered. When I was around 21, me and my colleagues founded the NGO called Youth Leadership Network. Lucky enough, we partnered with World Academy of Art and Science, who really supported our visions, supported our goals to make a change. And today, I'm still, I still consider myself to be one of the rare lucky ones because I'm working with Human Security for All campaign that really gives a safe space for young visionary people to bring new ideas of how to elevate, how to promote human security and to implement actually those ideas. And just to use this opportunity to thank Gary Jacobs and the rest of the team uh, for that. Though my work with Human Security for All campaign and through my work, with youth, uh, youth Leadership Network, my NGO, I'm always collaborating with many youth NGOs all the time. And I think you would be astonished to see what those young people out there do, how they take care of problems regarding 
environmental sustainability, human rights, and other burning problems of today. Anything related to sustainable peace. But not enough people take them seriously, and they do not have the type of power that you have. So I think it's time to bridge this gap between words and actions, between aspiration and execution. The youth are not the leaders of tomorrow. We are the leaders of today. We have the passion, we have the ideas, and the drive to create a sustainable, peaceful all, for all. And what we need now is the recognition that our voice actually matters, our perspectives are invaluable, and our power to affect change is actually real, not only some vague idea. So what is the pra practical solution that I was mentioning before for sustainable peace? Well, the solution is to understand young people, to understand their ideas, their thoughts, and for older generations to help them with their knowledge, that would be a win-win strategy for sustainable future. Young people know how to communicate with future leaders of our time because they're part of our generation. We can effectively convey the messages and knowledge that older generations have from the decision-making processes and bring solution in line with what young people want and understand so that we can live and implement all the ideas of sustainable peace, all the ideas of Agenda 2030 in the next, for the next 50, 100 years. So we can really have a sustainable peace so that we can, we can really have a sustainable future. Thank you so much.